Mr. Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, Prime Minister of the Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, almost 50 years ago, an adventurous and optimistic young man armed with only the electrical engineering degree and a certificate as an amateur athletic coach. He parted his beloved homeland for a place he had only imagined. As fate would have it, the young man enjoyed a sojournment not only to Africa and Africa, but to the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, and Jamaica. In these locations, he taught electrical skills and theory, supervised the electrical installation of a newly constructed multi-story hotel and manage and electrical and water cooperation. In all places, he engaged in the activity of sports, which he loved, we all love, especially soccer and rugby, field hockey. Now, long distance running was a sport which he sort of excelled. If you hear him tell it, he'd probably beaten all of the best that the countries he visited had to offer. I don't know if that's true or not. This period, however, was truly a tale of human development. He ingratiated himself in all the places he visited. He merited the respect of all who he encountered. It soon became apparent, however, if self-actualization was to be achieved, he would have to return to university. This he did and graduated with honors with a BA degree in combined arts of philosophy and religion. He returned to the Bahamas being his teaching eloquence raised such holistic institutions as C.C. Sweeting, Queen's College, St. Anne's School, St. John's College, St. Andrews, and the College of the Bahamas. All of his displayed bravura, this now seasoned teacher and college gentleman suddenly found himself in the role of student after he met the lovely Anne Oliver. So enamored was he, in a very short order acquired that current condition to which all of Paul Walbury's offsprings are known to have a passion for behavior history. He threw himself into this newfound desire with complete abandonment, even making sure that his daughter became equally infected. And the daughter is at present laboring uh, to complete a PhD degree in history at the University of Boston. And so much more can be said about this gentleman, this talks we'll have here in the afternoon about his philosophy. And Mr. Prime Minister, you might like to engage him in some of these things. He says about Voltaire and how he takes a philosopher write history, and how when a philosopher becomes king, then society becomes just. I'm not quite sure what we need to talk simple about that. But this young man is committed to this organization, this leadership, that time and passion, and the time and passion he's displayed, displayed uh, has improved the volumes that will be written about the Bahamas and its history. So ladies and gentlemen, Please put your hands together and welcome Jim Norma, President. Thanks, Keith. I don't know if I can live up to that. <laughs> Beautiful introduction. Just as I start, I want to make a little apology for the quality of the pictures. This actually Yeah, the book and the pictures in the book actually look much better than they come up on the screen. Um, with such a big audience, I'm sure I'll be able to buy a new screen with a silver effects. <laughs> Before I just start on the books, I, I, um, I really have thanks to give to a few people. My father-in-law, Dr. Paul Aldrey, who, as people said, was my mentor in history. 
my good wife, <coughs> Alex Aldrin Lola, who is a wonderful writer, I wish I could get a little bit more. And so they are the, the background to, to be becoming president of Bahamas Historical Society. It is an nepotism, it's, uh, I did it through them. So. And then um, for this present book, I've got to thank uh, Frankie Justice Carrera, if I'm pronouncing it right, who first set me off on the path asking me who was Diane Pullinger. And uh, I searched around for a good six months for a lady called Lee Erickson Ingram. Uh, a member of the Erickson families from, from Enagua, they had a house up on West Hill Street. Uh, she had about 10 sketchbooks of Diana Pullinger and furnished me with a lot of good information in which um, I wrote the story of Diana in the, in the 2010 journey. Price $10. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, I've got to give thanks to the Life of Tea Foundation who provided us with a $10,000 grant to publish the first thousand copies. Thanks to uh, Maureen French is right here. And, um, to the photographer par excellence, Ron Lightborn. Um, as you can see, the colors in the book actually uh, come up to more like the original colors. These have been faded over the last 50 odd years. And so, um, very, very good job. And then, um, the proofreaders, Cora Carey, uh, volunteers of the museum, Sarah Ornbrink, and with Dr. Lisa Lawler. Uh, thank Dr. Neil Saunders, who uh, checked the text for historical accuracy and um, gave me a few pointers, uh, like telling me that the, uh, the PLP hadn't ruled for 25 years. They governed. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, I've been here 40 odd years, but still, you know, you've got that Eurocentrism still in your head. And then finally, um, to Joanne Smith of Media Publishing, who did an excellent job on the layout and, and see that the book was published. The challenge of writing the uh, book, of course, I originally conceived it as a, a, a souvenir book for tourists, because in the museum here we get uh, mostly cruise ship pass pass passengers and a few from the hotels. Not many behave in the sprays of doors, but in fairness, we don't have to do So, um, the book can be admired for the beautiful artwork of Diana Pullinger. It's got a, a basic outline of Bahamian history, and hopefully, with my text, I hope it's a good read. I was happy to see that the primary students, when they came in, were all was reading the, the cartoons as they called so I was very, very pleased just to think, well, perhaps this will do good as a primary reader. Uh, and I chose a cover image as uh, showing the Lucayans watching the three Spanish ships coming in. And it brought to mind, well, the Lucayans were here first. One of the uh, things that Bishop Gomez told me when he became Bishop of the Palms in the St. John's was we must make the students think, which I caught on to that. It's a, it's a great thing that students should think, and that we should motivate them. And so when, I, when the kids come, I always ask them, what do you think the Lucayans would think when they saw the ships coming in? So the history of the Bahamas and pictures of the book is seen through the eyes of Diana Pollinger in the year 1957. The Bahamas was a country within the British Empire, and at that time Columbus was looked upon as a hero who had started the colonization of the New 